and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our beloved F5E Tiger 2 and we're going to be looking at air combat, in particular dogfights and in particular how to use the guns and how to use the missiles in air to air. So uh, first of all we'll have a look at what we've got. So regards to the guns, um, if this is the arming screen you can get to, gun ammo type we've got high explosive incendiary, combat mix, armor piercing, or target practice. For air to air, what would you say is the best? High explosive incendiary, guys, or combat mix? Yeah, high explosive incendiary, you don't need armor piercing for air to air. Roger. So, yeah, so combat mix is going to be a mixture of armor piercing and high explosive, basically. So that's that. Then we look at the missiles. This uh, version of the Tiger, unfortunately, can only carry two missiles, one on each wingtip. Uh, so we're going to look at that. We're going to go air to air. We've got AIM-9P, AIM-9P5, Cap 9M and Gar 8. Now I hope I get this the right way around. The Gar 8 is a Sidewinder variant, an early Sidewinder variant. I'm not sure which model, probably a B or a yep, D. It's a, it's a B. Uh, basically, it's, it's a really crap early Sidewinder, isn't it? It's the same thing you would get on the Sabre and I believe the um, the wingtip Sidewinders you get on the Vigan are also the same thing. It's just a Swedish built version. Roger, to be honest, they're so bad I wouldn't really advise him carrying them. Cap 9 is a training variant of the missile. Uh, the AIM-9 P and P-5 are more modern variants of the AIM-9. The P is rear aspect only, which means you have to be shooting at a hostile, and he has to be heading away from you, so you, you're you essentially aiming at his jet engine, okay? And the P-5 is a slightly more modern version, in fact it's a substantially more modern version, and that's all aspect, so you can fire at a hostile if he's head on, or if he's side on, or if he's rear on. Still, they're not as good as missiles like the Mike version, or the X version, but they're not bad. So we're going to aim up with um, P5s today. We're in the air now. We're armed up with our Papa 5s and our guns and we're ready to go. We've got Stahl, the sitting dummy up there, who we're going to be shooting. Hello, Stahl, and forgive me for shooting you. Uh, so can't be always forgiven. Yes, uh, so first we're going to look at guns. Uh, so first we're going to shoot just in basic ball sight mode with no radar tracking. So we've got our radar turned to standby here. We're going to arm our guns. Let me just um, get rid of my missiles for the time being. Missiles off. Master arm in the up position for on. And annoyingly, it's still getting the uh, tracking for the... Uh, ignore the buzzing, that's for the missiles, but I've got them uh, turned off at the moment. Right. In fact, before we go any further, let me show you the controls we're going to be using. Pause. And adjust controls. So, controls we're going to be using to fire a missile. Weapons release button to fire the guns. Gun trigger, second detent. If you have uh, a two-stage trigger, you can use first detent, but I don't have that. I recommend even if you don't, find the second button for the first detent so you can prepare yourself for shooting. Otherwise, it's basically impossible to pull off snapshots. Roger, the reason he says that is because there's a delay. Um, there's a delay when you pull the full trigger um, the, while the um, the gun shell release flaps have to open. It takes about half a second. Yeah, it's smoke deflectors basically to oh, keep uh, gun smoke from getting into your engines and stalling them out. Uh, and it takes about a quarter of a second to open it. Roger, and it puts a delay on the trigger, as you'll see, and you'll, you'll see as soon as you get to use them. Okay, we're also going to be looking at the dogfight modes. So we've got uh, dogfight resume switch forward. Uh, this is basically a dogfight mode for missiles, so if you're going for a missile attack and you want extra symbology, which you will want, uh, we'll be pressing that. We'll be, we've got here dogfight, uh, resume, search switch, aft, basically DG, so this is dogfight for the guns. You'll be pressing this to get in a dogfight mode for the guns, initiate radar tracking and, and stuff like that as we'll see. And um, if you've got a lock on a target and you want to get rid of that or you want to get rid of your current dogfight mode, you've got center press here. We've got our guns armed and we're going to head towards Shaw. So this is just basic uh, foresight mode without any radar tracking. So we're going to aim him up roughly. We've got no way of gauging his. Ignore the uh, beep, uh, the uh, sounds, that's just for the missiles. You can turn the down, by the way. Uh, to the very left of your yeah. pylons, like this. Noted. Noted and done. Um, right, so just in Borsa mode, we've got no tracking, so we're just going to aim roughly. I'm going to miss him on purpose here just to show you. Keep your finger on gun trigger. You can see that small delay as the smoke deflectors uh, fire. Uh, simple as that, really. Uh, next, we're going to go to a radar tracked um, dogfight gun mode. So we're going to go radar to operational. And we're going to press um, the uh, dogfight mode resume aft DG. So I'm going to press that now. And it is now in radar guns mode, dogfight guns mode. And we're going to have to get closer, him to, closer to him to get a lock on, so stand by. Uh, tad over. Why are you so fast? I'm on full burn. Okay, you saw it there switch. We've got within the minimum range of 
of uh, the radar guns and you can see we've got some different symbology we've still got a reticle here but now we've got a ranging bar so as we get closer that ranging bar is going to close in and when we get within guns range we're going to get some more symbology so stand by as i just make sure i don't over speed Right, so we're closing in range, we're closing in nicely, and we've got our uh, shoot cue, basically. So we've got within range, which is that marker there on the outside of the reticule, with that there. And we've got our shoot cue, which is a diamond there, so we're in range to shoot. And we've also got um, our in range uh, signal there on the radar scope. Now, you're probably not going to be looking at that, you're probably going to be looking at this. Uh, so we've got that. Um, we've also got a minimum range marker, if we get close... We'll see if we get closer. We'll see we've got a minimum range marker, which, which will be a circle at the top of the reticle. So stand by. You see we're a minimum range there. Um, I'm just going to pause it there before I overshoot. So we're at our absolute minimum range. And if that was a missile uh, we were firing, we'd have the same symbology. It would basically be too close to shoot. Would you agree with that, Stahl? Yeah, it's basically the missile just didn't have time to track after it comes off the rails. Roger that. With guns, realistically, you can shoot at more or less any range, as in close up. So with guns, you can still take that shot, uh, obviously, if you're close. Uh, but the truck real life, you would also have to worry, actually, about debris getting into your engines and such. That is actually quite dangerous if you're too close. Roger, that's a good point. Right, so we looked at that, uh, the ranging. Now we're going to look at the tracking. This is a radar guns mode, so it can basically compute lead. Uh, for if the guy is moving left to right. So let's get you shifting left to right, uh, start. Try not to overshoot. Just going to back off. And what we can see is that the gun pipper, the reticle, is moving about the screen, basically. So with the bore sight mode, it would always stay in the same place. But now, because it's computing lead, you can see that it's moving about to compute the lead based on the movement of my aircraft and the movement of his, his aircraft. And if I were to take a shot, I probably won't hit him with a single shot, but I'll just show what I mean. You can see it's basically shooting in front of him, so computing the lead. Okay, uh, hey, so that's that for guns mode. Anything you want to add to guns mode, Charles? Negative. Right, so now we'll go to missile mode. So we're going to do the uh, dogfight resume, if you just level out again, Star. Uh, the dogfight resume center press switch, and that has basically cancelled the, um, the gun um, uh, radar mode. And now we're going to do uh, the, the missile mode. So we're going to activate our missiles. We're going to turn up our volume of our seeker head. Head towards him, and we're going to press the dogfight resume DM, the missile mode, basically, the forward mode. And we've got it, and basically the same. It's picked him up because we've got near him. Um, it's we're already the range of the missiles is a lot more than the guns, obviously. So although we're quite far away from him, it's well within range. You can see the range marker again. We'll close up. Uh, we'll get the shot solution. The fire solution will be the same. It will be a little diamond here and an in range there. Okay, you see we're in range now. We've got our diamond there. We've got our in range there, and let's just test out the uh, minimum range. So we're going to get close, but we're going to try not to overshoot, it's quite difficult. And we've got a minimum range marker there, so at that point we wouldn't be able to shoot. Uh, the missile will probably wouldn't track, it wouldn't fuse in time. Okay, Stahl, I've just overshot you underneath, uh, just put your burners on for a second. And overtake me. Uh, next we want to show the cage uncage, I'm just going to pause Stahl. Uh, one button I forgot to show you was the cage uncage, whoops, pressed the wrong thing there. Uh, this one here, missile uncage switch. So as standard, the missile seeker head, which is that noise we can hear at the moment, is the the, the, the whining noise, is the seeker head on the missile displaying as noise. Um, so obviously when the pitch goes higher, it means it's got a lock on the hostile heat source. At the moment it's caged to bore sight. That means it's locked to the bore sight of the aircraft. The bore sight means the 12 o'clock position, basically there. Uh, what we can do is once we've got a hostile within that um, cage zone and we get a lock on him, when we hear the, the whining noise increase, what we can do is keep our finger on the uh, uncage button and what that allows the seeker head to do is to, un is to move, basically, f uncage from the ball side position and uh, allow it to seek at different angles. Uh, and so we will demonstrate that now. So if you come and shoot over my head, Star. I'm underneath you, but I'm going okay. past you right now. Enjoy. Right, so we're currently uncaged, uh, sorry, we're currently caged, and you can see only when we get him near the reticle uh, can we get the lock tone. If we move away, we'll lose the lock tone, you see? And let's get him again in the reticle, and we've got the lock tone. Now we're going to press uncaged to keep our finger on it, 
and now we're going to move him away from the reticle and what we'll see is that it keeps lock because the seeker head is now on cage it can now slew anywhere within its limits to track that target and the main reason for doing that is so that you can fire at a target without actually pointing at him and the reason you want to do that is so you can add leads to the shot so if the guy was turning I would want to turn out here in front of him to add lead to the shot most modern fighters have this uncaged ability okay so let me recage that uh, the next thing we're going to show is the um, is the G limit. So missiles can only be fired, or older missiles like this at least, can only be fired within certain G limits. So if we're turning too tightly, the G limit will be too much for the missile and it will give us a warning. I think it's a line at the bottom, Shaw. Uh, yeah, a little, uh, little rectangle. Right, I'm just going to catch up with you. Right, so we're back in dogfight mode missiles. We've got him locked, we've got our shoot queue. What we're going to do now is try and over G the plane on purpose and get the over G sign. So do you want to do a diving turnstile, see how much G we can load up? Sure. And I'll see if I can get that line. Whee! Yep, and you see you're going to pause it there. You see we've got our max uh, G limit there, which means you can't fire the missile uh, because we're pulling too much G at the moment. Okay, just going to level out. The only other thing that I'd like to look at, I'm going to turn that off obviously to fire the missiles and you're going to need master arm, master arm on at the top there uh, the only thing we're going to look at is um, gun sight modes um, uh, we don't find these particularly important but we're going to men uh, we're going to mention them so that was all radar based uh, stuff with those dogfight modes that we were looking at these are gun sight modes so here's our gun sight here and here's our gun sight mode switch we can have it off missile air to air guns one air to air guns two and manual um from memory manual i think is for um attacking ground targets missile is for missile combat air to air guns one specializes the gun site for what we call snap shooting uh, snapshot is when basically uh, you pull quickly to take a quick shot at someone um, for instance if they were moving left to right and we were closing on them very fast we would quickly pitch the plane up and take a shot that would specialize the site for that and air to air gun mode 2 uh, is for specializing in air to air guns when you're not taking a snapshot but when you are essentially following someone in a pursuit in a, in a, uh, in a measured pursuit uh, generally we don't find these gun sites actually the most particularly useful apart from manual and missile so in air to air combat we personally just use missile air to ground we use manual okay so we talked about the guns radar non radar we've talked about the missile um, oh, I, I think I forgot to say that you can use the missile without the radar mode as well. Uh, it just means you won't have the symbology, the ranging symbology. You, you'll um, basically have to do the ranging yourself by your own judgment. Um, anything else you want to mention on that, Star? No, I think it covers it. Roger, I hope that helps and we'll see you later.